Hi, I'm Andy Hunt, here to talk to you today a little bit about estimates and project planning in GROWS. So, estimates are kind of taken for granted as a, a standard and necessary sort of thing, but in software development, these present a particularly thorny problem for us, because software development is not about production. It's not really about producing things so much as it is about learning. Developers have to learn the requirements, obviously. They have to learn how their technology stack applies to this particular problem. But they also have to learn how the evolving system reacts to planned and unplanned circumstances, bugs, that sort of thing. So what it comes down to, when you talk about estimating how long a, a project will take to complete, what you're really asking is to estimate how long does it take for this particular team to learn something. Well. Clearly, the obvious answer is it depends on the team and on how similar this project is to other projects that they've done in the past. So there's one strike against us for any kind of an accurate long-range estimate. But the next issue might run even deeper than that. There's this great quote by Deb Mill Schofield where she says, Control is both an illusion and a delusion. Control is for beginners. And unfortunately, that's very true in software development. Um, we don't have control over the process, and we can't control or predict the act of designing code very well at all, and it's a very novice beginner's mistake to think that we can. The reason for this is simple. People are the raw material of software development, and we can't yet readily control people's imagination or creativity or control their rates of learning or understanding or communication we might be able to improve these over time, but that's different from gaining precise control in the short term, which we cannot do. But we can do a much better job at transparency, visibility into the development process, and tracking the progress of these activities and their outputs. So estimations for software are rarely correct and very, very frequently abused. They can be misrepresented as promises or guarantees, which they're not. So instead of arguing over the estimation process or getting involved in the no estimates movement altogether, we're going to avoid the entire topic and work with projections instead. So in the GROWS method, executives gain real-time transparency and accurate projections based on real data from the actual teams involved under actual conditions, where we can all work with projections within some sort of a known confidence interval so there's no surprises later on. We'll start by using burn-up charts. Now, a burn-up chart is a little bit different from the more common burn-down chart. Let me show you a picture of that. A burn-up chart is a simple graph that plots the number of shippable features completed over time, as shown here. The y-axis, up the left-hand side, is the number of completed shippable features that the team has finished. The x-axis going along the bottom there is time starting at the very beginning of the project to the targeted completion date when you might think this might be done by. Now, in the ideal situation, this is pretty straightforward. The team completes the desired number of features just in time for the desired completion date as shown on this graph with the gray line. We recommend burn up charts instead of burn down charts because burn up charts show you clearly what happens when more features are added, also known as scope creep, um, as we see here. Not only will the team not make the initial target date now, but <laughs> clearly this messes up the caption on the slide, which is a clear indication something is wrong. But that's a good thing because it makes the reality of the situation visible and transparent to everyone. This team might have made the original date, but you've got more things to do. It will take longer. It's simple math. Now, the way you work at Burnup Chart, once the project's underway, you simply plot the number of actual shippable features that were completed at the end of each time box iteration and plot a line between the dots to extrapolate a line up toward the top. But, and this is a very important but, using a burn-up chart does not mean that you have to wait and map out every task first before you can start to work. No, the team can start and produce valuable features right away, even if there are only a few features to find so far. 
That's fine. And in fact, that is a far better way to plan a project in GROWS, with continuous development of a little bit all the time, without any monstrously large or risky uh, events or episodes. It's just a little of everything, all the time, constant development, constant releases. That's the idea in a nutshell. Now let's dig a little bit deeper. Time frames. First, let's clarify what we mean by things like stories and features and so on. A story represents something a user can do or benefit from or that the system needs in order to operate. A given story is small enough to be completed within a single time box development iteration and provides value to someone. Stories ideally take somewhere between, say, a half a day and maybe three days max to complete. A feature is a collection of stories that provides some standalone value, does something. At the highest level, we start with long-range, concrete, organizational goals. The, these are things the organization wants to do over the next few years, over the next year. These are long-term uh, aspirations. All project work, ultimately, should be in service of some specific initiative. Otherwise, why are you doing it? Initiatives may contain themes or epics or both uh, for larger companies, just as an organizational uh, technique, just to help sort it. Smaller companies, you don't need to bother with those levels, and you can go straight on down to features. In the GROWS method, we always want to use actual results under actual conditions, whether we're talking about process adoption, technical solutions, planning and scheduling, whatever it might be. We want real data. This gives us high confidence projections for each project once enough data has been gathered, which is great once the project is underway. But this presents a special problem for you at the very beginning of the project. How can you make any sort of estimate for the project before the project has even started when there's no data yet? This is a very common problem. If you have to estimate up front and don't have any data from this team to extrapolate from, you have a couple of choices. You can use the rate for the same team from a previous project, which might be reasonably accurate. You can use the rate for a similar project with a different team, but that can be unreliable. Or you can use a generalized rule of thumb, which frankly is better than nothing. The first two are straightforward. Take some other project, figure out the number of features, the average stories per feature, and determine a basic team rate as features per iteration. Just divide the total number of features by the total number of iterations. You want the average stories per feature to be similar so that the results are roughly comparable. If they aren't, adjust the number of features accordingly so that they match a little more closely. If you have no data at all from any other reasonably similar team, you can start with a general rule of thumb of features have about 16 stories each, and stories take about two and a half days. Anecdotal evidence and experience has shown that these guidelines aren't terrible, but they aren't really correct either. So since this is low quality, low confidence data, we'll always show that on our burn-up charts as a gray dotted line, as shown here. That's how you start off. Now, as you begin to collect the actual number of shippable features with each iteration, begin to plot that on the burn-up chart, which we always show in Team Green. As you begin to extrapolate from the team's actual data, you may find that the line is trending for more features completed per iteration than the estimate, or it's trending exactly on the estimate, or it's trending toward fewer features per iteration. It's very common and perfectly natural for that last case, where the team's rate is showing fewer features completed than you wanted. Those features which would have been in later iterations will not be completed by the given target date. Given the data that we have, that is a simple fact. So you have several choices. You can make the team go faster or work harder. You can move the release date out, or you can cut features from the release. Choice number one is not possible in the short term. There are great ways to improve the team, and GROWS relies on many of these, but they take time to implement. And this team will not be ready in time for this deadline. So set this choice aside for now. Choice two might be a consideration, depending on your circumstances. It's probably not the best choice overall, 
Uh, it somewhat violates the spirit of time boxing. With time boxing, we ensure that you're always making steady progress by delivering regularly to a steady rhythm. Choice three is often the best choice to make to keep things moving forward smoothly. With a steady rhythm and development pace, those missing features will still be delivered. They'll just appear in a later release than originally hoped for. Consider the current state of apps on your smartphone. Right? Many apps are updated constantly, at least it seems it. As a user, you're probably confident that the announced feature you've been waiting for will show up, if not this time, then the next time. That spirit of continual, gradual delivery is a hallmark of modern software development and a departure from the old-fashioned, naive, everything-or-nothing sort of approach. To help convey the important parts of a burn-up chart, Groz uses a well-defined color code. Projections made without any real data, those based solely on initial wild guesses, initial estimates, are always shown using a dotted gray line. We don't have a lot of confidence in that data. Actual team data is always shown with a solid green line. Number of shippable features is always shown in green. Features that may fall outside the cone of completion are shown in red. Never show actual team velocity in red. The team velocity is a constant. It can't be changed in the short or even medium time frame. You extrapolate the team's velocity through the end of the project and see how many features can be reasonably completed. Features that are at risk for not being completed, or definitely can't be completed given current projections, are shown in red. It's very important to realize you cannot make the existing team go faster or magically become productive overnight. Their rate is their rate, such as it is, in the short term. There are other long-term fixes which we do address elsewhere in GROWS, but the challenge here now is to prioritize which features will be included by the target date and which ones won't. With an actively maintained burn-up chart in place, executives can enjoy real-time transparency and accurate projections based on real data from the actual teams involved under actual conditions. You won't need to guess anymore. You'll know. This is Andy Hunt for The Grows Method. Thanks for listening. Have a great day.